are a few scenes you will recognize. They are the houses you would be living in if you happened to be born in the Fiji Islands. And the place where a person is born is always a matter of accident. Perhaps the homes you live in are actually more like this. That's because you happen to be living in the United States. If you were a Newfoundland, which seems so bleak to you now by the lovely name of home, and you would think New York apartments were dreadful and a little stuffy. But the houses are fundamentally the same. You see, even in Morocco, the elevator is out of order, and you have a six-flight walk-up to get to bed. Among the Ainus, these huts are considered elegant apartments with every modern convenience. If you were living in the far north, this might be your face at the window shaving. Whereas here in southern climates, you have practically no furnace troubles, and you put your fire where you want it. Cooking under these conditions is done in the most convenient place. If you were Chinese, you would sing home sweet home for these, and you would think the Hollanders a queer people because they preferred to inhabit such a land as this. But a Hollander would wonder why the Zulus care to live like this. North, south, east, west. The world is covered with human habitations. All different but all alike in one thing. They shelter human beings, men and women and children. All different in appearance, all alike underneath. Here flashing before you are many types brought from all corners of the world. Black men and yellow and white, of all races, all creeds. The differences are all on the surface. Fundamentally, the important thing is the sameness. The brotherhood of man does not mean that we are all of the same color, all believe the same thing. It is real because all of us, the Zulu and the Frenchman, the Laplander and the American, the Japanese and the Hungarian, are doing the same thing wanting the same things, suffering the same things, and enjoying the same things. Our labor, our desires, our passions, and our joys make brothers of us all. We enjoy the same thing. From one end of the world to the other, men and women dance. The steps we dance are different, but we all dance for the same reason. We dance because we are happy, because we want to celebrate something, because men and women of whatever race or color like to do happy things together. On a holiday, the Italian peasants dress in pretty clothes and dance the dances their ancestors danced generations ago. They dance at a wedding in Hungary. In Japan, the geisha girls dance for the entertainment of the customers. And in an American nightclub, the girls dance in a different way, but for the very same reason. They dance to tom-toms in Morocco. In Arabia, the dervishes dance to a peculiar music, whirling until they fall in the dust. You probably wouldn't enjoy it, but they think it's fun. But the most elaborate and beautiful dances take place in Indochina. Stately and graceful movements are executed as part of the ritual of religious ceremonial performed before the temple. Life isn't all gaiety. After the dance and sometimes before comes the eating. For that we all have to go to market. You may run round the corner to a delicatessen. The French woman in her thrifty way goes to the great markets of Paris. In Morocco the bazaars spread all over the streets. And if you think this is a strange way to do your shopping, it is only because you forget that we do the same thing at our curbstone markets from the peddler's pushcart or the farmer's wagon. If we are to eat, we also have to work. Work is done to provide a living for the support of ourselves and our children. All over the world, men and women are working, sometimes happily, sometimes in great hardship. Follow one kind of work alone around the world and you will recognize the great outstanding common humanity of all mankind. Take the making of cloth because most of us have to wear something. A Navajo Indian weaves his blanket slowly and patiently until it becomes a work of art. In Upper Canada, the old carding machine still has worked. The same machine which you often see in American homes is a precious heirloom. Egyptians make their cloth almost as they did when the children of Israel were delivered from captivity thousands of years ago. 
In France, the grandfather reads the newspapers while the grandmother works. Elsewhere, a child takes part in the labor. The threads are spun and gathered together and the shuttles move up and down. You can see that even when the machine comes in, the motion is the same. But the machine has not gone everywhere. The Eskimo knows none, not even for the making of shoes. He has his machine right in his face and bites. But life is not always kindly. Misfortunes confront us. Men suffer want and tragedy alike. For instance, in the calamity brought on by economic forces, men of all races and creeds are to be found waiting before the employment offices, united in a desperate endeavor to keep alive. Men in the bread lines, in America or in Europe. No time to think of race or nation when men and women are starving. The same wants, the same joys, the same labor. You would say that all mankind is one. Yet all over the world, antagonisms are growing up. Kill, bruise, destroy, race against race. Forgetting that all races are only human beings. Lies, prejudice, false charges. Inflaming group against group. Making capital out of racial animosity. Men forget their common desires and their common destiny. They turn against their fellow men because these happen to be born of another race or to be children of another creed. Race and religious hatred disguises itself in many ways so that people fight and kill each other under many pretexts. Nations are invaded by prejudices, citizens torn apart. In some countries, racial and religious hatred rises to a pitch unknown in the modern world, concentrated and authorized by official decree, a persecution encouraged by the state, Religion and politics mingle in a crucible of hatred. The misery that grows out of unemployment and insecurity is turned into race and religious prejudice. Throughout the world it rages. Hate of man for man, brother for brother, hate and war. To kill, to mutilate, to defeat, to destroy, until the whole civilized world reels and trembles at the edge of destruction. We have conquered the forces of nature, but we have not conquered the brute in ourselves. Must this be so? Can it not be otherwise? Here you see some pictures of children at play. They are the children of all races and all religions, laughing, hoping, dreaming of the time when they will be men and women. They are unconscious of the bitterness and strife, the misery and the turmoil we have made. Race, religion, these are mere words to them. In a few years, they will be growing up. Remember that today's children are tomorrow's men and women. This happiness you see can be continued or destroyed. The choice is yours. If you would see them happy, you must rise above selfish ambitions and petty hatreds to higher planes. You must lead your steps away from dissension toward unity.